Alright guys, what's up? It's Jack and welcome back to another video and holy crap, did I just get killed right off of spawn? On maps this big? And there was somebody looking at me? My goodness. <laughs> it happens quite a lot in this game, whether it's um, free-for-all or whether it's team-based games. Uh, one, well, in team-based games, as soon as the game is, you know, within its first minute or whatnot, you can get stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, in this video, I want to talk about the problems with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and why people may or may not be angry and it all really just depends on which side of the fence you're on and I will tell you right off the bat that if you enjoyed Modern Warfare you are going to likely enjoy this game and even if, even if you didn't enjoy Modern Warfare you are more likely to enjoy this game more than you enjoyed Modern Warfare however with that being said, even though you enjoy it more than Modern Warfare, it doesn't mean you're going to enjoy it that much more than Modern Warfare. It, it really isn't saying much from that aspect. So even though this game is a different version of Modern Warfare, whether it's nerfed, a nerfed version of Modern Warfare, or whether it's a buffed version of Modern Warfare, depending on which side of the fence you're on and how you personally like to play, that's all on you. But in terms of in terms of whether it's better or worse really isn't saying much and that is pretty much all up to the player however this game i will tell you uh in a simple a simple way very much like modern warfare in a sense um, and, and actually in some other ways maybe I, I don't know i'm trying to think on whether or not modern warfare is more of a traditional call of duty than this game is but this is not a traditional flavor of Call of Duty. This is what Call of Duty has turned into. It's evolved or de-evolved, depending on which side of the fence you're on. And one of the biggest things that they've implemented into this game that has a lot of people... Some people are happy about it and some people are not happy about it is that there are a lot of inconsistencies. Some of them are by design and some of them are simply because this game is... Simply put incomplete unless it was meant to be like this and we're assuming that it's incomplete when it actually is complete so let's get right into the nitty-gritty of what the problems are with black ops cold war okay so let's uh, I, I made a little list here on the side so again um lots of randomness by the design and i'm going to start with uh, the big one and that's the maps there are, despite the fact that there are slightly less safe spaces and that the doors have been removed, there are still way too many lines of sight and the maps are way too big. And whether you're playing free-for-all or team deathmatch, it's very easy to basically go all the way back on the other end of the map behind some sort of head glitch and just stay there. You know, even though it's not as safe, it's still, there's still too much of a, a big, uh, a big portion of there, there's still the maps are just so big that you can literally get away with that there's only six players on each side of the team and you can or if you're in a free-for-all there's even more space and you can actually like get away with just sitting in one spot with your sights aimed down because the maps are so big so because the maps are big people are intimidated to move um, at least until they unlock ninja but even when they unlock ninja it's still gonna be more or less the same but from a gameplay perspective, in terms of moving to not moving, this game is actually more balanced than Modern Warfare was. Modern Warfare was very one-sided. This game, not as one-sided. However, when you look under the covers or, you know, beyond the shroud, so to speak, or whatever the hell you want to call it, um, the end result is still very similar to what Modern Warfare was, simply because of the fact that, in the end, you get randomness. You get less control, you get randomness. You've got your skill-based matchmaking in between and all these different things that go on, uh, broken things in the game, things are, that are not broken or things that are not working the way they should and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of things are, in my opinion, by design. So let's let's get straight into the next one here. Uh, and by the way, going back on maps, to give you guys more of a clear picture, like what you're seeing in these gameplays these are not youtube worthy gameplays whatsoever this is these are examples of some of the problems with the game in terms of like you can literally get in a gunfight with somebody and somebody in another random area is gonna take you down um and they could literally be anywhere and as a guy shoots my body for no reason whatsoever but anyway let's uh let's just say let's just compare this to sports right basketball there's basically five guys on a team there's one basket on either side of the court it's safe to say that both sides 
of both teams know what the other team's trying to do when the other team has the ball, right? Well, in Call of Duty, they've basically taken away that level of predictability. There has to be a level of predictability to keep the balance, and there is no predictability or a very minimum level of predictability, which adds to the randomness, is in what in which is what pisses people off. But at the same time, if you're Activision, it's exactly what you want because you want everybody to have an even and playing field experience you want all the stats to be relatively the same and that's basically your goal and in that aspect that they've definitely um they've accomplished that to say the least so uh so yeah it's basically like they've added it's like they it's like with the map design of this game it's like they've added like when you compare it to sports again it's like they've added like two or three other baskets and ways to score while keeping the player count the same on both teams and they made the court quite larger and like a big square as opposed to a big rectangle. So more baskets all over the place. So a player can veer off and score however they want at random, wherever they want. And there's a lot less predictability and a lot more randomness. That is exactly what they did with this map design. And when you factor in some of the other things that I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention in this video, it's, it's clearly, you know, by design. Now granted, there's a few things that are obviously incomplete and not, and not, uh, how do you put this? Uh, not patched up the way they should be, but at the same time, I think in the end, even if things were patched, unless you were to change the map design, a lot of the same shit is going to be happening. It, it really is that simple. So let's uh, let's continue with this, because um, I made a little list here. So uh, the spawns, obviously, if you saw the very first death of this video, uh, spawns, especially in free for all, definitely need some work. In team-based games, they also need some work, but they're not quite as bad. Um, at least with my experience, but spawns, they need some work. Uh, the weapon balance in this game is very heavily geared toward, at least with my experience, towards submachine guns and marksman rifles. And it's very easy, especially in team-based games, to hold down the map like, let's say, Garrison, and just be at any random spot behind a head glitch, because head glitches are all over the place, obviously, in Call of Duty. Um, and just sit there and just basically block the entire map and just take people out spawn after spawn after spawn. Um, this can even happen in free-for-all especially. So um, there are just, it's, there could be way too many places where you can get shot from. And again, if everybody's on an even playing field and everybody's stats are about the same, that to maybe even the devs and of course, especially to Activision is balanced and they have definitely accomplished their goal. Moving on, the, moving on to the next one. Everyone gets streaks in the end. And that's a big problem. And I suck at this game. I'm good at traditional Call of Duty. This is not a traditional Call of Duty by... You know, the map design in and of itself is enough to change that. The maps are a hell of a lot more like Battlefield. But I think even Battlefield players uh, can have a certain level of control that's better than this one. Um, so, everybody gets their streaks in the end. It's a lot like Black Ops 4. You're a solo player. You got the worst players on your team because the game thinks you're the best player in the lobby. And chances are the game is probably right in that aspect. And you're going up against a team of three sweats or more. And what are they going to do? They're going to drop streaks on you in a game of Kill Confirmed, left and right. And that's basically what happens with every ma every match in this game. Everybody gets their streaks in the end, and it's very annoying. Now, I know that there are some easy way to take those streaks out, but it doesn't stop the fact that some of these streaks are annoying, and not every streak is a helicopter. You get your streaks like your crossbow, you got your war machine, you got your, um, uh, your uh, what's it called, the artillery, which is like a lightning strike, which, by the way, they nerfed since beta, which is ridiculous. The artillery sucks now. Uh, compared to the way it was in beta and as well as alpha but um but you guys get the point everybody gets their streaks in the end and as a person that sucks at this game specifically i don't like that i don't like the fact that i'm getting my streaks every game i shouldn't be so um so yeah uh, moving on to the next one there's obviously team balancing even in in, in team-based games and of course skill-based matchmaking i don't think i have to say anything else about skill-based matchmaking by the way in the second game which is also a terrible gameplay again this is this is basically to show you guys what i go through a majority of the time with this game and You've seen everything I've done in previous Call of Duty games, and I'm not a reverse booster, I'm not a cheater, never have been, never will be. So I just wanted to show you guys the difference as well as the randomness, and you could be like, holy shit, this shit is actually happening. Um, and how crazy it is, and how there's really nothing you can do about it. That's why I wanted to show you these gameplays. And then the at the end of the second gameplay, you'll actually see that I got matched up with a professional Halo player known as Straight Sick. That is very good in free-for-all games. And um, yeah, he had Ninja unlocked, and uh, by the way, everybody's going to be using Ninja. The footsteps are too too damn loud, and everybody and their mother is going to be using Ninja, make no mistake about it. So, And if you're not using it, and you have it unlocked, put that shit on. <laughs> Unless you don't like to move. But anyway, um, 
let's see. Aim centering also feels off. And some of the weapons, when you aim down sights, and like the Milano SMG, for instance, the centering feels off. There's something off about that, that weapon. And after I aim down sights, I have to overly adjust in order to change it, whether I have an optic on it or not. And it seems very random at times. Sometimes it feels like I'm fine, and then sometimes it feels like I'm just off. And the same thing is happening with the aim assist. The aim assist inconsistencies are crazy, but it doesn't just stop with the aim assist inconsistencies, uh, like the video that Exclusive Ace was talking about. It's not just that, but it's also like there's movement inconsistencies. Sometimes it feels like I'm strafe shooting the way I should be strafe shooting, and then at random times, it just... It's like I'm, I'm, I'm walking on... Like, what's it called? Like on glue or something, like super glue on the ground, and it's slowing me down. It's very, very weird and very inconsistent and very aggravating. And it's another reason to give people the incentive to, like, not move because they never know when these inconsistencies are going to take place, and it's very random. So, like the video that barely any of you saw that I put up yesterday talking about the stock attachment, well, after about an hour or so, things started getting inconsistent, and then things started getting really aggravating. So, and of course, there's the weapon balance. I think I've already talked about the weapon balance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over that one because I already talked about that one. Um, I mean, by the way, going back to weapon balance really quick before I move on, um, you can have your sights aimed down and wait for somebody to come around a corner, for instance. And if they have an SMG, and if you've got, like, let's say an assault rifle, even though you're ready and all they have to do is come around the corner and you fire your gun, they're still going to kill you faster. <laughs> so in that sense, there's maybe some shoot first, die first moments, which at first I wasn't experiencing because I was using the MP5 at first. And after about 150, 160, 170 kills or whatnot or whatever it was, um, I stopped using it. So and then yesterday before going to bed, I started using the MP5 again. And it's the only gun that's maintained a certain level of consistency. But there is still some inconsistencies even with that gun because sometimes it feels like aim assist is working and sometimes it feels like aim assist is not working. And, and on top of that, there's the strafe speed and everything else that comes with it that randomly cause imbalances as opposed to them being consistent in the same all the time so it's almost like stats of the weapon are changing like on the fly sometimes um in terms of how fast you can ads or how, how fast you can move i mean seriously I i'm not kidding i'm not making this shit up so um and of course i've already talked about footsteps being too loud so when you put everything together of everything that i just mentioned and i'm sure there's going to be even more things that will be uh will be talked about in the future as more players and more people that uh, look at different things of this game that do testing and stuff like that. We will figure, we, we will find out new things and more things, but uh, all in all though, when you look at it from Activision's point of view, as well as the developer's point of view, or maybe just Activision's point of view, they've definitely succeeded because everybody, for the most part, unless you reverse boost or cheat or use a Cronus or Zen Max or whatever the deal is, or hacks, um, everybody's pretty much on an even playing field in this game. So... Um, there's going to be some times where you play reasonably well. I mean, I have yet to get what I consider a YouTube-worthy gameplay in this game. But uh, again, going back to what I was saying, this is not a traditional Call of Duty game because it does not play like a traditional Call of Duty game. And on top of that, there's too many inconsistencies and too many things that are broken or not operating the way they should. So, therefore, this is, this is why a lot of players are angry, and especially the Call of Duty traditionalists. And this is the direction that we're headed in right now, at least. Now, the question that some of you guys might be asking, for those of you guys that are asking this question, is will there be a traditional Call of Duty again in terms of the way we used to have it? Like, uh, let's say, Black Ops 4 and before. And the, the answer to that question is, I don't know. It could be the rule of three again, because you guys remember back in the day during the advanced movement games, people were ready to go back on the ground after, uh, back on boots on the ground after Black Ops 3, but they still gave us Infinite Warfare. So... It really is whatever they decide to do, and this is a very similar to Modern Warfare type of game. And quite frankly, this is very much the kind of flavor of Call of Duty that we're going to get that, in my opinion, is too far away from traditional COD. And it, it veers too far off what made Call of Duty good in the, in the first place from every single aspect, from the size of the maps as well as the map design itself to skill-based matchmaking being implemented and the patent and the way the weapon balancing works specifically and inconsistencies the game being incomplete the lack of content at launch yada 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 the list goes on and on and we all know about it and i really don't have to say that much about it because quite frankly um everybody has already been saying it and i really don't need to be adding fuel to this fire i just wanted to basically make this video and basically not ever talk about it ever again now i get again this game to me is more fun than modern warfare but even though I'm saying that, and I mean it, 
in its current state as well as the just the overall design like put the inconsistencies of the broken things aside it's still a game that doesn't play like a traditional call of duty so and the skill based matchmaking and everything else that's implemented only adds to the aggravation so um so the thing is because it doesn't play like a traditional call of duty and traditional call of duty is what i crave um i will be having this game in slow doses i've already I've already put in about 12 hours into this game since launch night. So uh, yesterday being the vast bulk of the time that I put on, I think I put on anywhere from seven to 10 hours into this game yesterday. So I I have to look at my play time to actually, to, to give you guys a, a perfect, um, to give you guys a perfect perfect uh, time in terms of what I put into the game. But I've put in a good amount of time into the game. Um, I'm in the, I'm in my forties in, in leveling up. So and yeah this has been my experience i'm sure this has been a lot of other people's experience as well so that is my overall conclusion and i'm not really upset about it in the in in the aspect of like you know or in the aspect of hey i should be doing better or this game is supposed to be like this or it's supposed to be like that yes the game is supposed to be more like a traditional call of duty but at the same time if they want to take the game in another direction then we have no say in it. So, and as long as the noobs, and as long as there are more noobs, the more popular game is. And that's what they managed to do. They turn the good players into noobs by designing the game against them. And that's how it works. But that's all I got for this one, guys. Let me know down in the comments section. And this is Jack, signing off.